Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes, you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. I don't know how to talk to you I don't know how to ask you if you're okay My friends always feel the need to tell me Love things. this, thank you, Kurt Seems like they're just happy Hey, everybody Hey, everybody, welcome to another fun edition of What's Up with Cobelt and Friends Thank you, Kurt, uh, for playing Drake for me We all know that I was at the concert Yeah, how was that? Phenomenal! I was at the concert last night at the Forum I love him, um... He did a concert there. Uh, my friends actually own that place, uh, the Azoff, so it was really nice. Um, but he did uh, a concert with Future, if you know him. I mean, look, I really love this music, so half the time people look yeah. at me and go, what? Like you, like, you like that music? I'm like, I love it. I was just practically up on a chair dancing. It was great. I loved it. You like him too, right? Yeah, you know, I, I, I like his hotline blink, blink or whatever that was. Oh, one. I was so into it. So it was great. But I have to tell you, they tell you at these concerts to be there at 6.30 and I'm thinking, what are they getting, grandmothers at a Drake concert? But, you know, I showed up on time. Um, this thing didn't even start until 9.30. I felt ridiculous. I was there with a friend, and we were eating nachos after nachos, texting people. We were bored to death. And then finally the place filled up at 9 o'clock. Drake went on. It was a great night. So it was, it was a really terrific evening. So uh, there you go. So it's been a really busy week the night before that. We were down in Orange County. We were watching the uh, Republican... Uh, uh, and the Democratic debate, the first debate, was very interesting. We're actually down there um, at, I don't know, an arena somewhere in Anaheim because John did a show from there, my husband John from the John and Ken show of KFI Radio, and it was a crazy crowd, and it was a very animated place to be to watch the debate, I'll tell you that. So we've been analyzing it at home and with my friends and whatnot, watching all the news, and right now on with us, we have Fred Davis the third. Hi, Fred, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm great. You are a, a United States Republican Party media and advertising consultant. Wow, that's a, that, that's a mouthful. A little bit about you. You uh, created the celebrity ad for presidential candidate John McCain and the demon sheep ad for Carly Fiorina. And in the 2014 uh, election cycle, you won 100% of the races in the primary and in the general election. That's really impressive. I'd have you on my team anytime. <laughs> well, it was a good year. This year might be a little more difficult. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So, do you mind if we play a couple clips real quickly? Is that all right? No, first, of first, you want to do. Uh, let's hear. Let's hear from Trump first. Why not? Okay. I'm getting that queued up for you. Hang on. Came the first woman nominated for president by a major party earlier this month. You said she doesn't have quote a presidential look. She's standing here right now. What did you mean by that? Uh, she doesn't have the look. She doesn't have the stamina. I said she doesn't have the stamina. And I don't believe she does have the stamina. To be president of this country, you need tremendous stamina. The court was you he does repeat himself a lot, I have to say. Um, and he kept repeating stamina, stamina. I think he's trying to look at, you know, she's been not too well lately, particularly with the pneumonia. Um, so I think he wants to, he was trying to drill home the point that maybe she's not healthy enough to be president, you know, and he kept drilling it until, you know, he got his point across. What are your thoughts there? My thought in general to start with is that it was a great example of a case of one kid who was extremely prepared, one candidate who feel the need prepared at all and the results Hillary, uh, knew was going to come in super prepared. And Don made a big point of saying, which Hillary even brought up, that uh, she she was going to prepare for the debate, and he didn't. And he was proud of the fact, and, and I bet when he walked home that night and no one was around but his family, he was not proud of the fact that he hadn't prepared. You know, it's interesting, because a lot of the people that I was with, they were big Trump supporters. It really depends upon who you're supporting. And I am so on the fence on this particular election. 
Um, it's incredible. I mean, I tend to go a little more toward Hillary myself, but um, that crowd thought that he really won, that he was prepared. But I thought her answer was terrific, that while he was out campaigning, she was actually preparing to be president and preparing for the debate. So that was actually very clever. Now let's go to... Um, uh, but you know what that showed? showed you know, I'm a, I'm a Trump fan, so mm-hmm. I'm a Republican. But she had answer for everything. There was anything Lester Holt asked. There wasn't anything that Donald Trump brought up. You wouldn't have expected. And so what did she do? She did what my great client here, Elizabeth Dunn, would have done. She sat down, she studied a list of things that were likely to come. She worked with a group to have to answer each. There were two persons, I thought. Did you say you were in Orange County? And they thought Trump did a good job. Absolutely. Right? I mean, but that was his crowd where we were. It was a big Trump crowd. So, of course. you know, understandably, you know, it depends upon who you're sitting in the room with. And I have many, many friends who were texting me throughout the night going, she rocked it. She did this, you know, and they were in a room with uh, Hillary fans. It all depends upon who you're, who you're out for. You know, it, it really does. I mean, no matter what they could do, they could show up in their underwear and look ridiculous. If you really support Trump, he's your guy. And same with her. I mean, she could just, you know, be drooling and not feeling well. If she's your girl or she's your candidate that's who you're going to stand behind and that's what i think let's go to the other clip can we um clinton's clip let's listen to this too i think that trade is an important issue of course we are five percent of the world's population we have to trade with the other 95 percent and we need to have smart fair trade deals we also though need to have a tax system that rewards work and not just financial transactions and the kind of plan that donald has put forth would be trickle-down economics all over again. In fact, it would be the most extreme version, the biggest tax cuts for uh, the top percents of the people in this country than we've ever had. I call it trumped up trickle-down because that's exactly what it would be. That is not how we grow the economy. All right, the crowd again that I was with, wow, did they boo that. They didn't want to hear... You know, to raise on taxes, uh, that really got a got a reaction. What are your thoughts on that? They don't want the tax their taxes to go up. I was I was speaking at a group for USC on Monday night, and so the crowd I was with, I would say, it was fifty fifty mm-hmm. prior to the race or prior to the debate, and half of them cheered and half of them booed, just like you would expect. But at the end of the day, that again shows my point. She was prepared. I mean, she had that. How many times do you think she, looking in the mirror, had said that line and made that little pause? I call it pause, trumped up, you know, whatever it is, trumped up, trickle down. <laughs> and it stuck. It rang home. You chose that to show on your, to, to play on your show just now. He didn't have anything like that. He wasn't prepared for, for that debate. Well, and I think it showed. Look at the polls. I mean, the Austin polls say Trump won. Well, those aren't polls. Every real poll of substance says that Hillary trounced him. My hope is that he learned from that and comes prepared next time. I bet he does. I hope he does. I'm not sure, because if you notice, he tends to repeat the same phrases. He does not have the depth of knowledge that she has. First of all, he could not. She's been doing this for 30 years. He could not. It's not possible. But I'm not sure exactly how much research he's doing, particularly in uh, foreign politics. She's going to kill him in that. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. I also thought, if I may say, if I hear one more comment about Rosie O'Donnell, I think it's cheap. I think it's disgusting. It really bothers me. And I have to tell you, for someone who vacillates, who's on the fence a little bit, when he started doing that, I thought, that's it. He lost me. I think it's really uh, disgusting because the man, uh, she's a private citizen, and I just think he needs to leave her out of this debate, out of this uh, this election of running for the, the President of the United States. I hope you agree with that. I thought it made him look desperate, that he didn't have an answer for all those names he's called women. Now, by the same token, I'm not, that was about the only question that she asked, that Hillary asked, that I, I thought was a little bit too much. I mean, it was, um, uh, what's her name, all over. It was almost the same question that Megyn Kelly asked and created such a great controversy. Well, that wasn't new and fresh. That was old news. Everything else she did, I thought, was pretty darn brilliant. And this is someone who's not a Hillary Clinton fan. Uh, I agree with you. I think he was grasping for straws. You mentioned that he repeated himself. He repeated himself 
over and over and over and over and over again the same lines, like he, he, desperate yes, for an he, answer. And he also tends to have the same words. I notice this. He uses the word disaster. It's a disaster. She's a disaster. He's a disaster. The situation is a disaster. He, he has little words and phrases. But to actually put down a woman, a mother, a citizen of the United States, was nothing to do with politics, bothers me to my inner core. And that there is where the man would lose me, just starting right there. I just think it's kind of disgusting to do well, that. Um, I, just, I just think he was desperate. He's done it before. And it plays when you're in a Donald Trump rally inside an airplane hangar with 40,000 people that are Donald Trump supporters. But had he prepared with proper people like Kellyanne Conway, his campaign manager, is really, really good. She's really smart. She's the best one-line writer I know. So what's going on? He's, he's not listening or what? he didn't let her prepare him, but, or he would have been prepared with great lines because he would have known that's a likely question for her to come up with, and he would have had a good answer. So obviously I was going to ask you, who do you think won the debate? Duh. I think Hillary won hands down. What do you think of their strategists, um, her strategist and his? Wait, let me just say one thing about this. I thought she appeared very calm. Then many, many times that he tried to attack her, she simply continued with the same smile and just looked into the camera and started to talk about the issues. I thought that was very smart of her. She didn't let him get to her at all. Didn't even totally, flinch. Totally agree. But you know what? That was practice. She did her homework. She prepared. That was right. <clears throat> Had he sat down like she did, God knows how many weeks, days, hours she worked on that debate. It's the most important day of this election, probably. And she knocked it out of the ballpark. Had he done that, he's not an idiot. He's a smart guy. And had he listened to Roger Ailes and listened to Kellyanne Conway and listened to the experts around him, he would have done well, too. But he didn't because I think his greatest strategist is himself. Okay, but and, that's and hopefully he'll learn from that. I'm not sure because by now he should have right. He should really quell his urge to sort of say what's on the top of his uh, mind. And a lot of people are concerned. Good heavens, what is he going to do um, in a foreign policy meeting or anywhere else that he's just going to spout off at the top of the mouth? And that's a big concern for many Republicans that I know. Um, anyway, so the strategy, he's got a strategy, so you're saying it's possible he's not really listening. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they, he called, he didn't call, but his people called me a little over a year ago. And we talked about what he was like. Would he listen? Was he serious about running for president? Those kinds of things. And actually, it went nowhere due to economics. He didn't really want to pay. But but they they convinced me that, number one, he really did want to run, and he really did listen. But this was two people I talked to who are no longer with the campaign, <laughs> Sam Nunberg and Corey Lewandowski. They were both decent, good, major supporters of Mr. Trump, as they called him. And I think they thought he was actually going to listen. Uh, Paul Manafort is a very bright guy. He didn't listen to Paul, but Kellyanne's fabulous. Didn't listen. I mean, yeah, I know he didn't listen to Kellyanne for the debate because she would not have let him go in there unprepared like this. You know, um, um, so clearly her strategy, and look at all the the experience she has. She's watched her husband go through this. She's been working for so many years in this. You know, you have to admit. If you were to give it to anybody with the experience, there's no question that she could fill that seat very, very easily. And I, I just think with two more debates to come, if people see what he, if he continues to do this, he's just going to sink a little further, don't you think? Well, I, I don't, I don't know that he has sunk that far. But let me. He let hasn't. Me you, You're right about that, actually. That's right. Let me tell you the flip side of the coin. The flip side of the coin is why is Donald Trump where he is today? My, I was doing John Kasich's race, an incredibly a qualified, experienced human being. He'd make a great president. And yet we were the second last standing, but Trump was standing a lot higher than we were at the end. Why is that? It's because America across the board has the greatest disgust for Washington and politicians in general that I've ever seen in my lifetime. I've been in this business 43 or 44 years. I've never seen anything like this. Everybody always says Washington's unpopular. This is unheard of. This it's is true. off the charts. So do people really care? Not everybody, but, you know, and you said it right. Forty percent of the people are going to vote for Trump. Forty percent of the people are going to vote for Hillary. The fight is between <laughs> the what's left, the 20 percent that remains, that are independents or on the fence and all that. The angry people 
don't care whether he knows the name of the president of some Russian state. They don't care about what he did with his stakes or what he did with his education company. They probably don't care what happened with Miss Universe and, and those kind of things that both sides have been picking back and forth on. All they want is something different other than what they have now. So at the end of the day, if I were doing the ads, I would aim it just on that. I would say one is the voice of something different. The other is the voice of just what we've had for the last million years that has made you so angry. You know what? But that's why he's not thinking. Right. But, you know, you can have a different voice, but it's nice to be a little dignified with that voice. Um, I think initially in the debates with that enormous stage, you know, one by one they were leaving. But still, that was a lot of a lot of people to go through until he was the last man standing. I thought people were a little bit amused by him because his his real personality wasn't completely divulged. You know, he had to sort of share the stage. And now that it's just him up there and he's really just sort of saying anything, I think that's where he's getting himself into trouble. So who can you make any predictions, you think, for the next debate? I know you're saying, hey, um, you know, he needs to really learn from what he did. But any you know, predictions? What, I, what I've learned over the last year, no with Donald Trump, you can't make any predictions. My guess is that he will get a lot of heat from a lot of people that he needs to listen to, and he probably will, and I think he'll come in better prepared. Will he ever be as prepared as Hillary? Probably not. He can't will be. He, will he ever lose that the kind of edge that you don't know what he's going to say next? He probably shouldn't because that's what's gotten him where he is this far, and I think he will maintain that. But he has to come off more presidential. I agree with you 100%. He can't be attacking Rosie O'Donnell. Presidents don't do that. He can't be doing a lot of the things that he did there. He can't interrupt all the time. He can't, <laughs> you know, that was just, it was painful for me to watch. And after the debate, I had to get up in front of this same group and do 45 minutes of Q&A with two my other two panelists were two very prominent uh, Democrat liberals. So clearly, Hillary won the race. So I was the only one to get beaten and flogged at my little speech. So you know, uh, you were, I, you, I were, get you. you were saying how he does not um, use other people's uh, money. He didn't want to spend any money on the uh, campaign ads earlier uh, on in the race, and that's why um, you know he was using right because that's that's what right. he has done all along in his career. He and admittedly so. He uses others, pe other people's. I can't get that out. He uses other people's money. There we go, to build uh, what build the empire that he has. Um, and one thing when he talks about bringing jobs back here, okay, taking them back from China. Notice, I notice as a journalist, I notice that he uses the word fight. We're going to fight. Well, those are, in my opinion, not good words to use. Do you know what I mean? Like to, to, to me, he's always talking about fighting and you're going to build this wall and you're going to pay for it and we're going to take our jobs back. And he just seems so aggressive. And I think there's a way when you're doing your foreign policy, why does he have to be so aggressive about it? I think it's a bit of a turnoff too. But it's, it's, it's done him well. It's served him well. That's what angry people want. They don't want somebody to come in and negotiate. They want somebody to come in and grab them by the throat and say, America's right and you're wrong and we're doing it my way. That's why he's done well. Mm -hmm. Not with you, but with a lot of people. So what would you do if you were on his campaign? What would you say to him? <laughs> Donald, this is what you need to do. I, I, would, I would say you need to listen to Roger and Kellyanne. You, you need to – here's a great example, Donald. We talked about this, and you wanted to do it your way. And look, she cleaned your clock. You can't let her clean your clock again. Let's prepare. Let's look at a list of 50 items that are likely to come up in that debate. It's not hard to make that list. Let's discuss each one so you really know the facts on it. And let's come up with some great – comeback lines for the attacks that you know people are going to make on you. Did you know somebody was going to attack him on comments he's made about women? Of course. Did you know he was going to, you know, they were going to attack him on his uh, TPP and other trade policies? Of course. Well, if you're not prepared with a perfect comeback line like Hillary did was, you can't win the debate. 
So I would say let's go back and look at the tape of the debate, and you're not going to like it, and you won't be happy, but let's sit down and work on this thing, and when that debate's over, you will be happy, I promise. Okay, look, you're, you're an insider. You talked about Ailes. What's, what are these people saying, that he's really difficult to, to um, sit in a room and listen? You know, when they tell him what to do, is he saying, well, guys, I'd rather do it like this. I can't imagine that he would just quietly listen to what they're asking him to do. He doesn't quietly listen. Is that and, what? You know, he's been through quite a few people, if you've noticed. I mean, look, Roger uh, Ailes is not an easy guy. I know Roger Ailes. So, right. uh, come on, what is he saying is going on? Like, every day he goes to work and he has to hold his breath and wonder if the boss is going to listen? You know, or how do I no, do it? No, I, I, Roger and, and Donald are friends. I mean, right. Roger ha hasn't called me to tell me about their inside chat. But my guess is that Roger gives him great advice and he says, I will, I will take it under advisement. Just... And then came out there got blindsided early in the debate. Within the, the first minute, he was on the defensive. He re remained on the defensive the entire time. And he did one of the worst things you can do in a, debate, in a debate, and that is to get caught up in trying to defend yourself as opposed to slinging back. And that's just a, that's debate 101, and he didn't do that. He, you know, no, 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 I'm not wrong on that. And I have a other clients that would do the same thing. That's just one of the first things you do in debate prep. And debate prep is a miserable time. No candidate likes debate prep because there's somebody over there on the other side who's really that's pretending like they're the opponent and they've always done their homework. And their goal is to get under your skin and it works every time. I, I don't remember a debate prep I've been to that went the entire amount of time it's set. Let's say it's set for two hours. It's usually over in 25 minutes because the candidate can't stand it anymore. It's, it's a miserable thing. So I can see why Donald wouldn't want to do it. But he's running for president of the United States. He has to prepare. So one, one piece of advice for him, Donald, and obviously I know you want him to prepare. But let's say he's having a tough time even sitting there doing that. You know, Donald, you have to... You, you have to learn 10, let's say... Anybody can memorize 10 things. Uh, Hillary memorized 100. Memorize 10. To memorize 10 great comeback lines that get you out of a bind. So instead of trying to explain yourself, you shift and you go to one of these great lines that she had. Mm -hmm. And that's not hard. He can do that in, um, you know, two or three hours. He has great people around him. Great All right. people. He, he really does, but you're right. He needs to listen very uh, finally because we have my next guest on. She's uh, holding on the line. Um, prediction, who do you think is going to become our next president of the United States? I know you're a Republican, but just if you don't mind, what do you think is going to happen? Honestly, right now, Deborah, I'd say it's a 50-50 battle. I, I think it maybe it went to 49-51 with that debate. There's two debates yet to come. I still think people will watch, maybe not 85 million next time, but a lot of people, and they follow the press afterwards. I think there's too much that can happen over the next few days, uh, but it's very close to 50-50. Hmm. Fred Davis III, the United States Republican Party media and ad count, uh, consultant, thank you so much for joining us. You've been terrific. You're welcome. Brother. You've been terrific. Can we have you on again? I'd love to. Okay, wonderful. See you soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. He is terrific. Yeah, that was really insightful. Yeah, but I mean, I couldn't even imagine working with Donald Trump and saying, now, Donald, sit down. This is what you need to do. And he'd say, ah, let me go do my hair. I'm not going <laughs> to. I don't know what he would say. But I have to tell you, he's very difficult to tame. I know plenty of people who work for him and who have worked for him. Um, I, you know, if the guy wants to win, this is what he needs to do. He needs to listen to the people who are, he's strategizing with. He needs to pull it back a little bit. Anyway, we've got uh, Rachel. Rachel's on the line. Oh, we're Skyping. Yay, we're Skyping with her. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel is an astrologer and healer, and she writes regularly for Live Box Magazine, and she hosts a very, very successful podcast here at UBN Network called Blissen Up. I'm so happy you're here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, this Talking is Talking about one of my favorite topics. Politics and yes. astrology. Yes. So, and I know you're so great at this. I mean, she's amazing. She doesn't just sort of like yeah. sit there and read charts or go to the back of the newspaper. I mean, this woman knows her numbers. She she approaches it as a science, which is what it is. Yeah, I've seen. I've had her on a couple of shows that I engineered. Incredible. It's just amazing. No, I know, and I still want to have her back and do do mine because you and I talked just a little little bit. But to really do this in depth, it requires so much uh, knowledge and science. So, okay, 
What do you what did you think of the debates? Did you watch or did you watch just anything? Um, I did. I yeah. watched. And I think like many Americans, I was probably, uh, you know, half of them I was I was watching with my hands uh, on my forehead. Like, I can't believe this is happening. Mm. Um, well, you know, I, I, I think I think um, I think because it, I don't think the debates brought out the best in either one of them. I mean, would, would you agree with that? I think she looked pretty good, I have to say. I think he looked like, an, you know, not as strong as he could. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I think she would have looked better had she been able to, like, m- focus more on on her on her issues, on her plans, on her, her, her the, the successes that she's had, rather than sort of defending some of the the um, attacks. You know what, though? That always tends to happen for the first debate because mm-hmm. everybody's up there trying to make their point. It's like, I don't like you. I don't like you. Look what you did wrong. Look what you did. And then by the second one, they start to get down to, um, you know, to business. And by the third one, they know, holy shit, I really have to clinch this or that's it. This is my final, final, t- you know, chance to really have the American people see me up against her or him. Um, I love saying her, by the way. Isn't that a I nice know, thing? I know, me too, me too. I mean, I'm yeah. sitting here saying, oh, her. Yes, okay. I know. And actually, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is that, um, you know, in, in I, when I look at an, an, at the astrology of a presidential election, I look at several different factors. I look at the, the individual charts of each candidate. Um, I look at uh, the chart of the U.S. at the time of the election, on election mm. day for Washington, D.C., when the polls open. See, I wouldn't have even thought of that, yeah. Kurt. Yeah. I have to tell you. Yeah. See, she thinks of everything. I'm, I mean, you know, what are, <laughs> go ahead, keep going. Yeah. I'm so impressed with you. Go and ahead. then I also look at just what's happening astrologically throughout the election, throughout the campaign, throughout the election. And one of the biggest key words that, um, that, I, that I keep going back to um, for this election is disruption. This is a time when we have had we've had Uranus, which is the kind of the planet of change and the planet of of the rebel and and like that that sort of unpredictable sort of out of the blue element. Um, We've had that planet aspecting like almost standing right next to um, in a conjunction with the dwarf planet Eris, which is related to feminism and um, and and kind of empowerment of marginalized people. And it's been a prevalent theme throughout this entire election. And so it's no surprise that we have for the first time ever uh, our, our, uh, a, female, a, a female nominee. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So in reading both of their charts, and I know this is way more complicated than I could, you know, <laughs> than a simple little question like, yes. oh, so what are you seeing in each one? But OK, here we go. What are you seeing yeah. in each one? Like, what is each one bringing to the table? You know, their strengths, their weaknesses, their hair color. You know, I'm talking about <laughs> Trump here. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, is okay, orange so, the color for Trump? Is that it? Orange is, yes, orange is the new black for Trump. Orange um, is everything for Trump. It's his skin color, his hair color, his fingernails, I, I noticed, are even orange. Yes, exactly. um, I'm not trying to really criticize him. I don't, I don't even want to do that, but I had to throw that in there. So anyway. Well, you know, I think, to, I think you speak to a, a point, uh, to, a, to a really important point. And that is, you know, this this election, so much of the focus not only has it been about disrupting the status quo and changing the way things are, but it's also been about truth. Yeah. And and and, you know, if you look at at Donald's orangeness, so to speak, you see that that it's there's a facade, you know, the orange color, the orange hair. It's like there's there's so much of him that is that is. that is almost like a, who's the real Donald Trump? I have to tell you, his family is orange. And by that, I mean his immediate family. His wife oh, is very oh. orange. She doesn't need to be orange. I mean, I have to tell you, she's a beautiful woman. Don't you think, Kurt? Thank you. But I have to tell you, <laughs> All right. she's orange, too. You yeah. know, they must have that guy or girl on standby right there in their, like, you know, palace in on yeah. Trump Plaza in uh, New York City. Because every day they walk out and they've got this orange glow. Even the child. I mean, I have to say, just the whole family. But um, keep going. And well, so Donald Trump's rising sign, which uh, the rising sign indicates how other people see you. Yeah. And it also it's it's technically the sign that is on the eastern horizon at the time and place of your birth. And and that's the technical information for those of you who follow. And his sign, his rising sign is Leo. And and Leo is ruled by the sun. So that that natural like uh, need to have a tan, need to have, you know, the, the, the kind of the blonde hair is, is naturally represented there. This now in terms of a presidential candidate or in terms of a leader, this is a very strong 
um, aspect of a chart that 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 tends to give him the, the kind of the, the pull toward the spotlight and and celebrity status. It happens to be at 29 degrees of Leo, which is associated with the 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 um, star Regulus, which is is called the little king or the little prince or the king. And so there's a real need for him. The little prince. The remember remember that with the whole thing with the hands. It was like yeah. oh my gosh, I I can't help it. There's so much that you could. I mean, this is a very serious election, but yeah. there's so much that you can kind of poke fun at that he's done with him. I mean, somebody's got to throw together a reel of all the ridiculous things that he's yes. done. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> so, and, and, and I think that so that we can that we can explain that astrologically by looking at what's happening in his chart right now, which is that, you know, he he's he's got a, He's got a match. He's got a Gemini son. And sometimes Jim, I love Gemini's, um, but sometimes Gemini's uh, tend to say what they what they're going to say without a filter. It, they tend to it's like uh, you know open mouth insert foot and that can be that can be a pattern with with a lot of Gemini's just because there's when you when a Gemini has something that they need to say it's almost it almost like burns inside of them they're the planet of communication and so with him that's great if if, if it were if he didn't have a lot of Uranus transits which is Uranus is sort of like like we talked about before that disruptor it's the it's the the rebel if he didn't have a lot of that going on in his chart then he would probably be able to to, to more carefully articulate his points um, but Uranus what Uranus is doing in his chart right now is making him a little bit impulsive not only with his words but with his actions and I think that that's gonna hurt him uh, because people are gonna start to see through the illusion um, see that that uh, and especially as we get into the second and third debates I think he's gonna have to really really fine-tune his messages and and be very specific about his talking points otherwise he's gonna he's gonna lose popularity what about her but it is amazing you have to say that it has remained pretty much such a close race 50 50 mm -hmm. and you know depending upon which side you're on Republican or Democrat I know what side you're on um, you know I was looking at a map the other day with the red states and the blue states. He's carrying an awful lot of those states, even still after some of the ridiculous things that he's done. So it's almost like he could stick his foot in his mouth any time and people will just like, ah, whatever. And then they just disregard it. And it's almost like they just want something new, something different. What part of the sign is there where he's just at the right place at the right time where people want to hear a different sort of message? Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Well, I think so much of so much of this um, of, of of what's happening astrologically and what's been happening since he since he first announced his nomination, is that there there has been a focus on on um, on on truth on on what is the truth, and because he was saying things that were different than things that we've heard from other politicians in the past, and because he's come through as as like someone completely and totally outside of the box, outside of of the 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 sort of the construct of the government, I think people fo found that uh, to be a breath of fresh air. Um, at at the time when he was when he was announcing his nomination, and when we when I was first on your show at the presidential debate, um, yeah. in, at the Reagan Library, what was happening then is the planet Jupiter, which is the planet of luck, expansion, and mm. opportunity, was sitting right on his on his ascendant, which is kind of his public face. So he was getting he was he was sort of in the spotlight at the right place at the right time and saying the things that that disrupted the status quo. So I think he really did step up to that challenge. Um, you mentioned uh, truth. You know, Donald Trump needs to be a little bit careful because when he spouts things off, I mean, there's fact checkers everywhere and they're they're checking a lot of what he's doing. And a lot of it is not adding up and not totaling up. Um, yeah. But even that doesn't seem to matter. I mean, people are just going, ah, well, he just doesn't know. He doesn't have the experience in politics, but we still want him. So it's, it's just interesting that whatever is going on in his um, chart is working. F it continues to work for him. Now, what about her? So actually, and I'll, I'll say, um, and it, you know, as an astrologer, it can be a little bit difficult to look at these things objectively, and I really do try to. So um, I look at the positives and the negatives of both, and I do agree with you. I think this is going to be continue to be a very close race, and I think, I think that um, that um, that he's going to continue to rally support among his constituency. Now, look, when I look at her chart, she actually has better transits and better progressions, meaning. Her chart, her chart, um, you know, the way that the, the planets are affecting her chart today 
actually show more favor in terms of her popularity, in terms of her, her fundraising even, and um, also in terms of, of um, you know, what January looks like for her uh, if, if she is to win the, the, um, the election. Can you be more specific? Like, yeah. tell me a little bit about yeah. that, you know, what Absolutely. it's saying now and in November. Yep. So one of the things that she has going on in her chart right now is she's got she's got her and I'm, I'm looking at my screen pulling up charts so um, so you see my eyes darting around but um, one of the things that she has right now is she has the planet um, she has the planet Pluto which is the planet of mass media and it's the planet of major change major it's a like major transition um, and and it's it's nicely aspecting her Venus and Venus is the planet that relates to in a presidential election popularity um, it relates to uh, winning contests, like um, you know, her ability to magnetize, uh, you know, um, uh, support um, to attract attention. All of this is really, really heightened. It has been since she decided to run. Actually, this has been going on for her since the end of 2015, and it's going to continue all the way until February 8th. And um, and and so this transits. This transit I see a lot of times in charts of my celebrity clients who win major awards or who um, release like Grammy winning albums or, um, you know, who, who are, are doing something to win some kind of a contest or get some kind of a recognition. And it comes a lot of times almost like a snowball effect, like one positive thing leads to another positive thing leads to another positive thing. So it's not, it, this indicates to me that there's not a whole lot uh, that she has to, um, she's not having to fight to win the popularity, it's almost like just handed to her. And so I really like that for her uh, at this time and, and throughout the course of the election. So what are you predicting, you know? I mean, and, and you know, do you, like, do you, are you following this? You know, because I'm sure a lot of people are asking you about it. Is this something that you're following that you do regularly or, or no? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm, actually, I'm speaking about this at a panel discussion here in um, in Los Angeles, in Santa Monica, at the astrology meetup on on oh, uh, the ninth uh, the ninth of October. So in just a couple of weeks. So yeah, I, I follow very closely, and I'm very I, I love politics, as you know. Yeah. So um, so I get really excited about looking at this stuff. Um, and and overall, my prediction, and and I want to say too that with astrology, it's more forecasting. Um, we do we can look at like what what's favorable and what's not, but sometimes it can be tricky because influences like if someone wins a presidential election it's a victory however it starts a lot of work or it starts a whole new like there are responsibilities that come with that so um so you know so i, I want to just put that in out, out there that i think there are there are many ways to look at things and you can see the strengths and the weaknesses when i uh, when i when i look at all of everything put together i think it's going to be a really close race mm. i think um i think that we're going to have kind of a, um, a, 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 you know, sort of a, a popular vote, delegate vote. We're going to have one of those kinds of situations where it's, um, where it's not necessarily a landslide, which is why it's really important for everybody to get out and vote this election. It is, because, you know, a lot of people are concerned. There's no doubt that if, you know, in, in a crowd of people, if you say, so who are you voting for? A lot of people don't want to say that they're voting for Trump, but they're thinking that it's very likely that when they finally get in there to pull the trigger, they might in fact vote for Donald Trump. So for all those people who are Hillary uh, fans and who are riding behind her, they do need to get out and vote. I mean, everybody does. It's, it's one of the most important elections that I could ever recall. Yeah. I, I often wonder how it's going to change future elections um, to come, you know, because just look at what's happened. I mean, no one could have predicted it. Although, although, when they were all up there on that stage, I said a long time ago, I don't know if you remember, I said, he's going to get this. And by that, I meant the nomination. Yeah. I didn't yeah. necessarily mean the presidency, but the nomination. Everybody thought I was crazy. And I said, no, 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 no. I know the man, actually. And yeah. he's very charismatic. And if he keeps it in check, people are going to stand behind him. And that's exactly what happened. At the moment, though, I don't think he's keeping too much in check. You know, he's letting his natural personality come out. And a lot of it is, is very critical. And he's he could be very mean. So, and I think that's been his big downfall, actually, and good for her in that way, you know, yeah. aside from the fact that he's not nearly as uh, experienced on so many of the of what's no, going on. I know. There. Yeah. And, and for for those reasons and for for, you know, the, I think that, uh, you know, totally agree with you. 
And I think that for those reasons and and other reasons that I look at when I look at these charts, I, I think I think it's it's going to go to Hillary, but I think it's going to be a really, really tight race. Wow. Is it going to be one of those things where they're going to be counting like late into the night and the next morning? And remember when that happened in yeah. Florida? With yeah. Al Gore. And, yeah. Well, it's happened. Yeah, it happened with that with that election. Oh, that election was that that election was really interesting. We had that election during uh, Mercury retrograde, and oh boy. and, and it, there was a lot of confusion. It, you know, things were not as they seemed. So, but yeah, I don't think it will necessarily be that extreme, but I do think it's it's going to be close. Um, and I also think we haven't heard. I feel like there's some kind of there's something else like there. I feel like in the in the in the next couple of uh, in the in the next couple of months, I feel like we're going to be hearing from from other from other people. Maybe some of these independent parties. I, I think I think that there is going to be there are going to be some a lot of surprises, a lot of unexpected surprises along the way that are going to make everybody sort of wake up in a new in a new way. It's interesting to me though how they never quite can gain ground. I mean. We are a country screaming for a third party or even a fourth party, and it, they never can quite get there. And it would be so great if we had a terrific, charismatic uh, candidate with lots of money who can really pull it out, don't you think? I agree. I totally agree. Just, I, I think our country needs an independent party or some something else um, just because it's too div it's too div divided and mm -hmm. and it's it, I mean it we it very difficult to get anything accomplished yeah and we have it it's just that no one really is standing behind it to, to where it counts you know mm -hmm. um so okay we were talking on the phone a little bit and I said look you know I just want to ask about my chart yeah you, you, oh. you have to so tell me what's going on and I'll or should I tell you what's going on or you're going to tell me what's going on um well let's see here uh, okay, <laughs> where, where should I start? I could I could talk all day about your chart. You've got such a fascinating chart. Oh, please go! And, oh my gosh, and I saved it. And I only have five minutes left, so okay, okay. get all the good stuff out. All right, okay, okay, okay. So the the biggest thing is you're you're coming out of a of a of a two and a half year cycle that has been really challenging, where you've had a oh my lot God. of like trudging up hills and. Uh, and, and maybe even some disappointments and 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 it's like your your energy just hasn't been at its maximum oh good so when do I come out of that this afternoon you, you're out of, you just came out of it really like, you, like you, last you, night yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah tomorrow you is a new day um, but but what what's happening for you is that there are a lot of profession there are a lot there's some personal stuff too I, I, I won't I won't um, you know I, I won't uh, I won't I won't overlook that but but in terms of, of your professional life, you're you're getting ready to to start a, a, a couple of new projects that I think could be incredibly successful for you. Also, if you're thinking about, I mean, of course, just take a look at me. Of course, that's going to happen. No, I'm just no. kidding. But um, keep going. Um, really, like in what arena, please? Um, you know, I, I feel like I feel like there's going to be. I feel like there's there's. A, I, I'm seeing like a writing project for you. Are you doing a book or is there? I is am working on a book. Yes, okay, I am. I, I constantly wonderful. let it go to, on the side burner, though. You know, I have an issue with with focus sometimes. So I'll start working on something, and I'm so passionate about it. And then the next one comes up. That's very common, though. I think for artist type people, you know, we really have to keep ourselves focused. Yeah. Um, okay. What else? <laughs> the other thing is. There's so Saturn, which is the planet of commitment and responsibility and and structure, just entered your seventh house of relationships. And what's significant about this is that if you're thinking about starting any kind of new business partnership, or if you're thinking about kind of merging forces with somebody at this time, yeah. it's not necessarily the easiest relationship. Hmm. You know, there are some there are some struggles, and even in your marriage, there could be like some just like you're you know, it's kind of a, it's a, a period of like growth, and sometimes you go through growing pains when you're growing. At the same time, anything that you start at this time has longevity. That's what Saturn does. Saturn says if you commit, if you go in and you stick to it, then you're going to come out on the other side of this in two two years with something tangible, something successful, something that that really is long lasting, hmm. that that can that can build. Hmm. And what yeah. else about like personal stuff? I always want to know about that almost more than anything. Yeah. Um, uh, well, one thing I love, so I, I actually really like, so we just talked about Saturn in your seventh house, which is, yeah. which is going to, it's going to have an influence on your marriage and on your, Ooh. on your relationship. And, and I feel like this is a time of reconnection, of recommitment. And, um, and I could see you and, and your husband maybe doing something together to kind of almost like re, re, renew your vows or something. 
where you're uh, where you are where you're almost like dedicating yourselves again. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I guess he can dedicate himself to me all he wants all day. That would be just wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I think the biggest thing is you're coming out. You are on the other side of a really of, of an up and down, challenging, kind of tumultuous time. And so I think that that right now, your personal life, your professional life, all of it is is like you know what's next. So you're not necessarily um, you're not you're 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 at, you're on a blank page. Hmm. So in, in some ways, this is a very creative time for you. Right, and where, I just have to go out and do it. You're saying. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, actually, yeah, well, do it, but but it's but it's not it's not laborious. It's not like going out and 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 being very dis being very disciplined about you know your book or uh, it's it's really about like curiosity. Um, what that's if I tried me. This? What if I did that? That's I think that's how you keep that creative spark alive, and it's so present in your chart with that Pisces moon, which is is magical. Like you have this like this creative energy that's just that's a con you have a constant supply of it. Wow. And so, and so when you tap into like you know the play of that. that so then, you impressive. hear that, everybody? Of course it's <laughs> impressive. It's very impressive. You're impressive, Rachel. And, and unfortunately, you know how this goes. we yes. got to go because now yes. I'm out of time. Uh, but I'm actually, I almost might even call you on the ride home. But you have a client at 2 o'clock, don't do. you? Okay, so tell everybody out there how they can find you. Okay, my uh, email or my website is Rachel C, the letter C, Lang, L-A-N-G dot com. Mm -hmm. Or you can visit me at Blissen Up. At, at Blissen, not listen, but Blissen with a B. Right. Okay, you are wonderful. We're going to have you back on, okay? Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank Thanks for being here. Yay. Right. <laughs> love her. Yeah. She's, she's amazing. amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. She's smart. I love the way that she, you know, approaches everything. She's just incredible. So I guess we're out of time, huh? Yeah. We're... What did you think really quickly? Hillary or, or Donald? Who got it? I think Hillary got it, yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, Donald, it was just he was bringing the same stuff that he always does. Same stuff, me. same adjectives. He actually, yeah. you know, if he's going to keep doing that, the least he could do is come up with different adjectives, right? It's yeah, like, exactly. if, you know, maybe his handlers can say, here, use these 10 because they're different than the other 10. Anyway, everybody, thank you for tuning in to another really, really fun day. Uh, what's up with Cobalt and Friends? We'll see you next week.